for doing routing of cars, trucks, you name it, all the way through our cities. So in most terms, if we were to start looking at some of these backlights, if you use the wrong LED, look what's going to happen here on the bottom. We take a look at this particular system here. When we use some LEDs that are very focused, we're not getting a lot of light output in the light guide. So in this case, we just have three bright spots. That's really not what we want. And that's not what Garmin would want, for instance, to try to get this even illumination for their particular backlight. But of course, if we change to a very usual type LED where we're getting light out to 60 degrees in each direction, or half angle, of this particular LED, we'd have a very nice even illumination. That's what we're showing down here in this particular design. So using the right LED, which would be this one on the right, we're going to get the right results. And you can then play around with different LEDs using the program by just plugging them in and turning on the sources and then being able to see what the even illumination would look like, or the non-even, on the case of the left here. Well, there's a lot of other things we can do. And this is not, not just LEDs. We're talking about full lamps here. We're talking about lamps in LCD projector systems. And one of the things is I used one of the old systems because you can see a very sophisticated arc lamp inside this LED type of projection system. And the LCD here has the panels where it breaks up the red, green, and blue. So I wanted to also show you a little bit of the color spectrum capabilities inside the program. And of course, there's other new chips, there's new technologies uh, for doing some of this stuff. For instance, Silicon Optics has a very nice system where they're actually putting in a chip to, uh, to do some of this projection. And I'm showing that here in that capability. And finally, you can see things like little mirror arrays, or lenslet arrays in this case. And you know the sophistication of the bulb going into the dual reflector systems that you see up here on the top left. So some of the capabilities that we have in the program allow you to do some very sophisticated type applications. For instance, if we start looking in the medical arena, TraceBro can do things like fluorometers. So the fluorometer, fluorometer over here is shown. And you can see that uh, what the simulation looks like. You can see, the, for instance, the Turner Design uh, fluorometer over here. And this is a Pico fluorometer and because of its small size. And you can also do things like bulk scattering in tissue, which we show down here inside the program. We can do things like fluorescence. All the things needed to do medical simulation are capable in the TracePro product. So when you put this all together in the medical area, you can do things like excitation and emission of a fluorescing sample, and then seeing what the UV response is uh, at NG detector on the other side of the incoming beam. There's a lot of different things that you can do with TracePro in this area. And you can see here's a nice list over here on the right. And you can even zoom in on a lot of this stuff to see what's going on in terms of uh, fluorescence in the cuvette, for instance, on this, this portion. And of course, there's a stoke shift of the incoming beam versus what the output beam is. And that's actually taken care of in the program by specifying the correct uh, fluorophore in the product. But you're probably going to be doing things like reflector design, lens design. And those type of things are very nicely handled with the TracePro product. We have a lot of utilities and menus that allow you to take in a drawing, for instance, uh, the one on the left here. And we have a nice little uh, reflector menu that actually says how many facets do you want, what's the angle or output that you want. And the program then creates the faceted uh, reflector for you. You can then put multiple targets out here. And you can see what the light looks like as you go from one target to the next and see what the output's going to look like in terms of how much power, what the uniformity is, uh, in terms of what the desired beam specification. And now, in this new version of TracePro that comes out in May, we're going to have a utility where you specify what the source is, you specify the general size of the reflector, you specify what can vary in the reflector, and then you specify this target, and the program goes off and creates that reflector for you. So that's something new that I'll be talking about very shortly in this webinar. Now, we can get very sophisticated in some of these designs, especially in the lighting area. We can create troughers. And these troughers can have some very, very sophisticated setups with baffling, with multiple bulbs, with a very nice a double reflector type system that I'm showing over here. And these, uh, some of these things that we're trying to create here are to limit glare and manage the glare that are in some of these systems and to give the correct spatial distribution that we want out of the particular luminaire. So the thing is that we can create the geometry. We could then specify moving the bulbs around. We could specify changing the reflector shape. We can specify how many baffles that we want to try to do some of these things. And that's all available with the virtual prototyping in the system. So let's now start talking a little bit about what the TracePro interface looks like. The TracePro interface is 
multiple document capability, which means I can have a, a bunch of systems inside of TracePro. I can have four systems that are all different. And say, for instance, they have a different reflector shape, they have a different curvature, and I can then go through, analyze all four of them, show the results from all four, and compare them right on screen. I can cut and paste from one system into the next system, and I can save all the output for all the things that I do for reports later on in both text files and directly into Windows compliant products by just doing cut and paste or copying to the clipboard. So this multi-document, multi-window interface is excellent. And it's what we expect nowadays when we're working with CAD type systems. So after you've gotten in all the geometry and you've created all these sources that we've talked about, now you want to look at how good is my system. So we can do things like an illuminance analysis. Tell me how much power is on this top surface over here in this particular system. And the program will then show me an illuminance map that shows me exactly the amount of lumens on this particular system. In fact, we're going to do foot candles in this case. You can see the foot candles uh, legend up here on the left. And that's showing me how much power. You see this is a very nice uniform design as it comes out on that top surface. So these are some of the things that you might want to look at. There's other things, of course. There's color analysis. TracePro can do a lot of things in terms of color analysis. And if we had four different LEDs with four different outputs of color, we could then turn them all on. We could then look at the illuminance, and here's the illuminance map of these four up here. So we have a nice uniform pattern here. But we could also look at CIE color and true color for these four LEDs. And we can see the blue, and this is the blue LED emitting over here. It's blue-toned, red, and so forth, and green. And when you come and put them all together, this is the RGB type plot that we get out from it. Now, there's more than just plots per power per area. There's more than just plots of color. We have plots of intensity, and this means what's your angular output. And this is typically what you see for an LED, how much power is coming out of an LED, and usually what you see is a nice Lambertian pattern. And so in terms of what we are used to seeing uh, for a reflector of this faceted type, we're going to see something that has light that goes all the way out to 90 degrees, but most of the time you're hoping to be focusing, focusing this light somewhere with a peak in the middle, and that's what we're seeing right here for this particular output. And there's all kinds of different plots that we have for this. We have a polar candela plot over here shown on the, the top right. We're looking at a, an isocandela plot over here that shows a complete sphere. And finally down uh, over here on the bottom right is an isocandela plot. Um, so we have different, different options. And of course, these can all be color. We have all kinds of options for these particular candela plots. And if you want to see what the, the, uh, the light looks like on a surface in the program, we don't care what type of surface or what type of curvature it has. We can put the light right on that surface so you can see what it looks like. So here I've got a nice elliptical reflector. I've turned the arc lamp off, and you can see where all the light is. So this is where I'm going to try to focus and make sure that my reflector has the, I spend the most time to try to make sure it's focusing the light where I want it to. Here's another simulation where I actually put a reflector down here. I have a bulb taking off. Here's a road, and there's a wall out here so I can see what the illumination looks like, for instance, for an automotive headlamp. So this 3D radiance analysis is quite nice when you want to look at many objects or at a curved object to see what the power is on that particular object. Well, at this point in time, we've gone over the capabilities of TracePro. And I'd like to introduce the new TracePro Interactive Optimizer. This is the new utility that we'll be putting into our 7.0 project, uh, product, I should say, uh, in the May time frame. So if we take a look at the new, uh, the new utility, you're going to see something a little bit different. We have a 2D sketch utility that allows you to just take the cursor and digitize in these points. So I can just go in here and I can say I would like to create a segment using the segment tool and start creating all these different segments. And it would then create this particular reflector. There are six different buttons on here. The segment portion of it allows us to sketch in or digitize in our segments. The rays allow us to interactively ray trace from any source rays on the surface. And a bitmap says that I can take a screen capture and place it in here and then digitize on top of it my particular system that I want to actually use. Now, looking a little bit farther into the SEG toolbox tool, I'm going to open it up and show you a typical capability with the product, and that is that I can add control points, whether they be lines, which are straight lines, or splines, which are, of course, uh, objects that have curvature. They have two points and a weight to them, a control point. And that's what I'm showing here, that you have the capability to add segment points and control points to create curvatures that we see over here in the, the model, where there are actually curved portions. And you can also create a Fresnel type structure on any of these segments as well. And after inserting a segment, you can then sketch in the control points and change segment curves as needed 